Hello students, welcome back to my channel. I am Mam Dea and today we will be discussing biomolecules. Biomolecules will be our topic for weeks 3 and 4 of grade 10 science. Now, if we will be inspecting the title of this presentation, we can divide it into two parts. We have bio and we have molecules. So when we say bio, we mean life. Pag sinabi naman nating molecules, it's a combination of two or more atoms. So therefore, in this lesson, I will be discussing the molecules of life. Ngayon, bakit ba itong cover screen natin ay puro mga pagkain? Because food is a source of these biomolecules or large molecules needed for life. Ano bang favorite food mo? Donuts ba? Burgers? Fries? Pasta? Chicken? Mahilig ka ba sa samgyupsal? Or mahilig ka sa fruits and vegetables? According to one saying, you are what you eat. So whatever you eat, it contributes to your health. So I'm not here to lecture you on what to eat and what not to eat, but I'm here to tell you what are the benefits of eating a certain kind of food because we will be trying to classify food according to the biomolecules that you can get from them. And you will learn them in the next slides. Now let's compare biomolecules from the other components of our body. Here we can see where we can classify a biomolecule. So a biomolecule is also a macromolecule. It is larger than an atom or a molecule, but it is smaller than an organelle, your cell, your tissue, organs, or the organ systems. Let's define a biomolecule. A biomolecule is any molecule that is produced by a living organism and it includes large macromolecules such as proteins, polysaccharides, lipids, and nucleic acids. Some of these terms might be new to you, but we will be explaining them in a few minutes. So just like what I have said a while ago, we typically get these biomolecules from food. That's why there is a need for us to eat in the first place. It keeps organisms, just like us humans, alive. There are four main types of biomolecules. We have first, carbohydrates, second, proteins, third, nucleic acids, and four, lipids. I'm sure you are already familiar with the first three. Yung first two, lagi na yan na explain nung elementary kayo. Yung third naman, nucleic acids, we have already discussed that in the third quarter. Siguro ang medyo bago lang sa inyo is yung lipids. Let's start with carbohydrates. So, carbohydrates are the most common biomolecules. Carbohydrates are the primary energy source of our body. And by the way, carbohydrates are sugars. So, when we say sugar, we are not referring to the table sugar that you have at home. Yung asukal na ginagamit nyo sa bahay ay isang klase lang ng carbohydrate. Maraming klase ng sugar. And the formula for a carbohydrate would be this. Open parenthesis, CH2O, close parenthesis, N, where N is the number of molecules. And that would be an integer. So, for example, N is 2. You have to multiply to the inside, to the subscripts inside. So, your formula would be C2H4O2. You will see examples later. And to prove to you that carbohydrates are sugar, let's inspect this nutrition facts from one snack that we have here in the Philippines. So if you will notice, under the carbohydrates, we have here sugars. Because again, sugar and carbohydrates, they are the same. So ngayon palang liwanagin na po natin na pag tinawag natin 
na sugar, I'm not referring to the table sugar or the asukal, but I'm referring to sugars in general, which is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates have a building block or monomer. In the next discussions, you will be encountering this term, building block or monomer, kasi for each type of macromolecule or biomolecule, meron tayong tinatawag na mga building blocks. So if you have that building blocks, parang bahay yan, meron kayong mga hollow blocks na pinagpapatong-patong para mabuo yung isang bahay, ganun din yung mga biomolecules. So you need these building blocks or monomers in order to produce these large molecules. So for the case of carbohydrates, we have the monosaccharides. And when we say mono, it means one. And when we say saccharides, saccharide is another term for sugar. The elements that comprise a carbohydrate would be CHO or CHO. Remember this? C for carbon, H for hydrogen, and O for oxygen. And we have three classifications of carbohydrates. We have the simplest one, monosaccharides. We have disaccharides. And we have polysaccharides. You can differentiate them with the number of units. Makikita natin sa prefix na pag sinabing mono, 1. Pag sinabing di, 2. Pag sinabing poly, many. So, punta na tayo dun sa unang classification. We have the monosaccharides. Again, since we said monosaccharides, it is a simple sugar. The formula would be C6H12O6. And there are three examples or three types of monosaccharides. We have first glucose which is the blood sugar um, it is similar to dextrose kung familiar kayo sa mga nilalagay sa isang patient merong dextrose so kapag ang isang pasyente ay nasa ospital hindi nakakain sinasaksakan siya ng dextrose para masustain yung mga body processes niya kahit hindi siya nakakain ng real food. So, dextrose is similar to glucose or blood sugar. That is a monosaccharide. Another example is fructose or the fruit sugar. And the third example is galactose. It is found in milk together with glucose. Okay, so again... Three types of monosaccharides, glucose, fructose, and galactose. If we combine any two of these, we will be forming a disaccharide. Again, di means two. These are double sugars. The chemical formula is C12H22O11. Ang examples niyan ay unang-una, Maltose or malt sugar, usually nakikita siya sa beer. Maltose is formed by combining glucose and another glucose. So again, glucose plus glucose is equal to maltose. Kapag naman pinagsama natin si glucose at si galactose, meron naman tayong tinatawag na lactose or milk sugar. And if we combine glucose and fructose, we will be having sucrose. And this is your table sugar. Ito yung asukal na ginagamit natin sa bahay, pampatamis ng mga pagkain, ng juice, and many more. So as you can see, katulad ng ini-stress ko po kanina, si sugar na ginagamit nyo po sa bahay ay isa lang klase ng carbohydrate under disaccharides. Next, polysaccharides. Sabi nga natin kanina, more than two sugars, it would be considered a polysaccharide. Complex sugar na sila. And syempre, complex na rin yung chemical formula. The examples of polysaccharides are starch, narinig nyo na siguro yan, Glycogen, 
cellulose, and chitin. Let's start with starch. Starch is used for energy storage in plants and they provide a quick form of energy for the body. Actually, yung carbohydrates in general, they provide quick form of energy for us. Kaya may mga athlete na may tinatawag na pasta diet kasi quick form of energy nga sa kanila yon. So examples of food where we can derive starch are potatoes, Yan, pasta yung sanabi ko nga kanina, and rice. Rice is an example of a food where we can get starch. For glycogen naman, kanina si starch plants, dito naman used for energy storage in animals. So whenever the body doesn't need glucose for energy, it stores it in the liver and in the muscles in the form of glycogen. So, parang nakaimbak siya doon. Kapag kailanganin natin, nandun lang siya. Next, the third example of polysaccharide is the cellulose. Cellulose is found in plants, particularly in cell walls and bark of trees. It gives us fiber. So, paano natin malalaman na may cellulose ang isang pagkain? Halimbawa, di ba pag tayo ay kumakain ng gulay, example na lang, pasintabi po sa mga kumakain ngayon, pag tayo po ay kumakain ng napakaraming kangkong, hindi lahat ng kangkong na yan ay nadadigest ng body natin. Yung iba lumalabas din kapag tayo ay dumudumi. Kasi hindi kayang madigest ng body natin yung cellulose. Wala tayong enzyme to digest cellulose. So, lumalabas sila sa katawan natin. Pero the rest of the vegetables that is being digested by our body, they give us dietary fiber. And it is very important para dun sa mga bacteria, sa mga good bacteria na nasa tiyan natin that aids digestion sa ating katawan. The last example of polysaccharide would be chitin. Chitin... It forms the exoskeleton of certain insects and crustaceans. So, polysaccharide din yan. Now, how do we test for presence of carbohydrates? We have two tests. First is iodine test for starch. And the second one is the Benedict's test for simple carbohydrates. Dun muna tayo sa iodine test. So, si iodine naturally parang color brownish siya or medyo malapit siya sa violet. The test is used to determine the presence of starch in food or in materials. So, para malaman natin na present si starch, kailangan natin magpatak ng onting iodine doon and then magkakaroon na ng change of color if starch is present. So, kapag nag-change yung color from violet to black, kasi nga medyo purple, violet, brownish si iodine, ibig sabihin starch is present. Kapag naman walang starch, walang magbabago sa kulay. So, halimbawa, I got this picture from our seminar way back in 2015 or 2016. So, dito makikita natin na meron kaming iodine. Dito sa part na to, we used egg tray during that time and we tested the presence of starch in this food. Makikita natin dito merong banana and then merong different types of liquid then rice and then crackers, noodles, milk. So, nag-drop kami ng iodine sa bawat isa dyan and see what happens. So, merong mga food na walang naging change, it means walang starch. Pero may mga food na kitang-kita natin na nagkaroon ng color black. So, that signals the presence of starch. And that is the iodine test. Next, we have the Benedict's test. Again, it is a test for simple carbohydrates. Um, Benedict solution is bluish and 
Ito yung mga color change na kailangan i-observe. We have green, yellow, orange, red, and brick red. So, the closer the color would be to red, it means higher sugar content or higher carbohydrate content. So, ito naman yung nangyari dun sa aming experiment last time. Ayan. So, wala kaming napalabas na red dyan, pero we have green. Okay, and then the rest would still be color blue. Kailangan pa kasing i-boil yan. Okay, makikita natin dito yung results. So, nagkaroon ng change in color sa banana, sa orange, then sa milk, and then this signals the presence of sugar or carbohydrate. So, that's all for carbohydrates. Let's move now to the second type of biomolecule which is protein. So, ito familiar din kayo rito. Okay, proteins can also be found in nutrition facts. So, it is right here below carbohydrates. And proteins are bodybuilding molecules which help us grow. And then... They transport molecules in and out of the cell. They can also control the speed of chemical reactions. Meron tayong tinatawag ng mga enzymes. It is used for growth and repair. So, proteins make up the structure of living things. Hair, nails, skin, bones, muscle, lahat yan gawa sa protein. And Kanina, nabanggit natin yung term na monomer. If for carbohydrates, the monomer is a monosaccharide. For proteins, the monomer is an amino acid. And I'm sure you can remember this from our discussion of DNA and RNA because we have been discussing a lot of amino acids during that time. Medyo complicated ang general formula ni protein. So, ito siya. You have RCH, NH2, open and close parenthesis, COOH, where R is a side chain which is usually an amino acid. Mapapansin po natin dito na compared to a carbohydrate, we have an extra element and that is the nitrogen. So, kanina si carbohydrate, cho, dito si protein, chon. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, Nitrogen. Remember this kasi it is the structure of a protein. So, examples of where we can find protein. So, yung albumin ng egg or yung egg white. And then, hemoglobin sa ating blood. Ito naman, enzymes naman na kailangan sa digestion natin. Amylase, trypsin, pepsin, lipase, gelatinase. These are also all proteins. Now, to test for proteins, we have this test called a buret or biuret test. Ganito naman yung itsura niya. This test is used to determine the presence of a peptide bond, which is a bond between amino acids, and color blue yung reagent. So, kapag si reagent ay nag-change from blue to purple, it means na positive sa protein si food. The third type of macromolecule is nucleic acids. These biomolecules are not necessarily from food. Okay, we have already discussed this from third grading. And they are very important components in heredity because they are present in DNA. The monomer for nucleic acids are called nucleotides. So this was discussed in the previous quarter. And the elements that make up nucleic acids would be carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Chon P. Kung babalikan natin, ano ba yung mga nucleic acids? 
We have adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. They have very complex structure, but you will notice that we have those five elements. We have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and the phosphorus. The last example of biomolecules is the lipids. Lipids are also energy-giving molecules, but they are more commonly referred as the stored energy molecules. Mas marami silang nai-store na energy and mas for long term. The building block here would be fatty acids and the general formula would be this. Mas mahaba siya. CH3, CH2, open and close parenthesis, N, C, O, O, H. The atoms present in a lipid is basically the same as that of a carbohydrate. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Here, the value of N ranges from 2 to 28 but is always an even number. So, yan. Sabi ko nga kanina, lipids, katulad din ng carbohydrate, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Lipids are important because they provide protection for internal organs of the body and serve as waterproof covering in some plants and animals. So, saan natin makikita si lipids dito sa ating nutrition facts? Lipids would be fat. Okay? So, importante din po ang fats. Huwag lang sobra-sobra kasi ang sobra ay masama. Examples of lipids, steroids, cholesterol, fats, oils, nuts, waxes. They are hydrophobic. They do not dissolve in water. Meron tayong dalawang klase dyan. We have saturated fat. Tulad nitong butter. Yan usually yung mga solid form. And then we have unsaturated fat. Just like yung mga oils. So, dito meron akong cartoon na nakita. Sabi ni Water kay Fat. I'm sorry, we just can't be together. Tapos sabi nung, ano, molecule. Is it because I'm fat? O, again, bakit ba lumalayo si Water kay Fat? Because fats or lipids are hydrophobic. Hydrophobic, di ba? Hydro, water. Phobic is fearing. Water, fearing. To test the presence of lipids, we have what we call an ethanol emulsion test. Here, we will be using ethanol and para malaman natin na may lipids, kailangan mag-add tayo ng ethanol sa isang sample and kapag naman walang nangyari, syempre walang lipids. Kapag naman nagkaroon ng suspension sa itaas, katulad na makikita nyo rito sa picture, that means that lipid is present. So that's all for today. I hope I have given you a good discussion of the four types of biomolecules. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment them down below. Now, if you are new to this channel and you learned something in my video, please like and subscribe. So thank you very much for watching. And see you in my next video lesson. Bye!